a delicate case of murder. At 2 a.m., I say, Winstead, will your wife be down shortly? Yes. Laura promised a special seance for Miss Keaton here at 2. Yes, and I could hardly wait. I've always been so curious about things like this, but I've never attended a seance before. Well, I assure you, Miss Keaton, you'll find it most fascinating. I've been watching Laura practice for almost five years. She makes more progress with every sitting. It's absolutely astounding what she can do. Uh, isn't it, Winstead? Yes, quite. Oh, yes. She really didn't know she had the power, you know, until about 1937. Remember Winstead, the, the penthouse party gave the beastly thing. Do you remember? Yes, I remember very well. It was Quentin Ramsey. Oh, yes, that's who it was. Ramsey had a mystic oracle board, you know, Ouija. No one could get the thing to work until they coaxed Laura to sit down and have a try. And she made the board work? Oh, indeed she did. All over the place. <laughs> It was absolutely weird. She got messages from several of the guest friends who had passed on some time ago. People she'd never heard of until that night. How wonderful. Uh, she used the board for about a year and then found out she could get pencil messages. Pencil messages? Yes. Yeah, she simply substituted the pencil for the little heart-shaped board with the eyes and glass window. Her messages came in more rapidly that way, were more complete, and this method was less tiring for her. You mean... She actually contacts departed spirits that way? I mean, she did. But she gave up the writing method two years ago. Uh, didn't she, Winstead? Yes, thank heavens. Every place I'd go, I'd find a paper simply covered with strange scratching, harebrained, so-called messages. But look here, old fellow. Do I detect a shade of sarcasm in your voice? I dare say you do. Not a bored with the whole thing. But why, Winstead? Simply because it's all a lot of... Well, go on. Oh, never mind. No, oh, I wish you'd come on downstairs and get this thing over with. But, Rika, I urge you not to waste your time with this foolishness. Foolishness? <laughs> now, look here, Winstead. You can't talk about your wife's work like that. No, darling, really. I'm absolutely fascinated by it all. I can't wait for Mrs. Winstead to come down. Well, no, she'll be down in a moment. I say, Winstead, really, I can't understand your attitude about Laura's work. Why, you used to enjoy watching her work immensely. Yes. I used to love her immensely. What? I say, does that mean that you... Uh, Mr. Rogers, you said a moment ago that Mrs. Winstead doesn't communicate by means of pencil writing any longer. Uh, why? Why, no, she doesn't. <laughs> After about a year of it, she undertook a profound and comprehensive study of spiritualism and communication with those who have left this level. In her study, she learned that those departed ones can sometimes make contact with us through the use of a medium's voice. Uh, she, uh, well, she began very slowly at first, lying relaxed on a couch, eyes closed, and eventually her contact began to use a lawyer's own voice for their messages. And... That's what she'll do for us tonight? That and more. More? Oh, yes. You see, Miss Keaton, after Laura Winstead perfected her means of vocal communication with spirits, she continued her studies and experiments until she became able to bring about uh, materialization. You mean... I mean, uh, now we see the departed one with whom we commune. Oh. Well, I really didn't expect that. I... Thought possibly a few table wrappings. Oh, there'll be more than mere wrappings here tonight, Miss Keaton. Oh, here's Laura now. Oh, Laura, dear. Good evening. Or should I say good morning? It's after 2 a.m. Yes, Laura. We've been waiting for you. Really, I think you could be more prompt. Do you, Harvey? Or perhaps you should hold the seances instead of me. Now, Laura. There's really no reason for you to make a scene. Oh, no, no, of course not. We're not here for a scene. It's for a seance. Uh, yes. Uh, shall we begin, Laura? Yes. Harvey, if this is going to bore you, I suggest you go into the library until we've finished. No. I'll 
remain here. Then I must ask you to assume the right attitude. You know we always have difficulty getting good contact whenever a disbeliever is present. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Winstead believes, don't you, Harvey? I'd rather ask that same question of you, Frederica. We're finished here. Don't worry about me, Mrs. Winstead. I'm quite open-minded. I'm sure you are, dear. Now, if uh, we'll all gather around the table... Rogers, will you turn off the lights, please? Oh, yes. Certainly. There we are. Now we're all... Oh, oh what's that? Oh, what's wrong? What's happened? Oh, oh, never mind, Laura. Federico, are you all right? Oh, yes. Yes, of course she is. I really missed my chair and bumped into hers. <laughs> so sorry, Miss Keaton. Oh, I'm sorry, too. Please forgive me, but I, I was startled for a moment. There now. We're all settled. It was entirely my fault, Miss Keaton. I, I'm terribly sorry. It's quite all right, Mr. Rogers. Is everyone quite ready? Yes, Laura. All ready. Shall we begin any time now? Harvey, we will begin when an opportune time arrives. Let me tell you once again that if you are impatient, it will be best that you will leave us. Oh, no. No, Harvey, please don't go. Don't worry. I have no intention of leaving. You please all join hands. Roger, give me your hand. Miss Keaton, yours, please. Now, now you two clasp hands with Mr. Winstead. Yes, I, I understand. Harvey, where's your hand? Oh, oh, there it is. All set, Laura. Now, whatever happens, no one is to break the contact. Is that perfectly clear? No one. We will soon make communication with one from another level. Where will we see this? I must ask you to be very quiet, Miss Keaton. No one is to speak. And when the materialization takes place, please do not utter a sound unless it addresses you personally. We're gathered here... To commune with whomsoever wishes to contact us. We have gathered with open minds and with a unity of purpose. If there is someone who wishes to speak to us or any one of us, will he or she please make herself known? Is someone seeking contact? Please knock twice for no, thrice for yes. Do you have a message for someone present? For me? No. For someone else who is present here? Do you wish to speak through me? Do you wish to show yourself to us? Ah, very well. We will await your appearance now. When you are ready to speak through me, please begin. Be good and do not 
saw it so plainly. It was my mother. I know it was. Harvey, did you see her? Yes, I saw her. Will you turn up the lights, Roger? Uh, yes, of course. Feeling all right, Laura? Yes. Quite all right, thank you. Uh, Miss Keaton? Yes, I... I suppose so. I... I don't know what to make of this. It... It's all so wonderful. I take it with a grain of salt, my dear. Try not to think too much about it. Harvey. I'll not have you say such things. Miss Keaton, you've just seen and talked with your mother. You may do so again whenever you wish. In case there's the slightest doubt in your mind, I can assure you that it was your mother. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sure it was, Mrs. Winston. And as I say, it's... It's so wonderful. Tell me, why haven't I heard of your ability to do this before now? Oh. Because, Miss Keaton, I permit no one to speak of it. I do not wish to become a public figure. I, I give sittings for my friends. I don't wish the world at large to know about my power, so I I swear every newcomer to complete and absolute secrecy. I'm asking you for your assurance now. You mean you don't want me to speak of this to anyone? Yes, that's what I mean. You must promise to speak to no one of what you have seen here tonight. Very well, Mrs. Winston. As you wish. I shall expect you to keep that promise. No. The seance is ended. I shall bid you all good night. Now, Laura, dear, won't you stay and talk for a while? Thank you, no. I'm very tired, and it's almost three o'clock. I'll see you to the stairs, then, and then I must be going. A Winston, old chap, I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Very well. Thank you, Rogers. Uh, good night, Miss Keaton. Good night, Mr. Rogers. Mrs. Winston. Good night, my dear. Please come back again when you can. Oh, thank you. I will. Good night, Laura. I'll run Frederica home. I'll be long shortly. Yes, Harvey. Take your time, my dear. <laughs> now, whatever made me say that, I'm sure you will anyway. Good night. Harvey. She's suspicious. That I'm in love with you? How could she have found out? I told her. You did? Yes. Made a clean breast of it to her. Told her it was no good she and I trying to continue to make a go of it. She refuses to give me a divorce. Oh. I'm really desperate, Frederica. I can't stand living with her another day. She... She's changed so. There's no love in her heart anymore. No warmth. She suddenly becomes such a different person. Bagging, sharp-tongued, overbearing. Oh, poor dear. You do need someone to look after you. She must neglect you terribly. She does. I minded a lot at first. Believe me, Frederica, I was always in love with Laura. Now she's... She's so indifferent. Everything I try to do for her. But why has she become so indifferent to you? I stopped trying to explain that months ago. I... I don't care anymore. Now that I've found you... Harvey. You do love me, don't you, Frederica? Oh, yes, dear. Of course I do. But we can't go on like this. With no solution in view. But there must be a solution. There must be some way. But there is no way. No way except the one Laura denies us. Just give me a little time, Frederica. It isn't hopeless yet. I promise you, Frederica, I'll find a way. My I'll darling. find a way somehow. My darling. Harvey, I'm still thinking about what Laura did here tonight. The apparition... The voice of my mother. Oh, nonsense, Frederica. Darling, what do you mean? Here, I'll show you what I mean. Here, I, I want you to see this, Frederica. Here you are. See? Well, that's all 
almost an exact image of my mother. Nothing but a paper mache face, painted to resemble an old lady, an old gray shawl, and some old style spectacles. But how does it work? How does she make it appear? Easily. Look, up above there. An almost invisible wire strung across the room. Laura simply releases an electrically controlled lock on this cabinet behind her chair. Since the invisible wire is placed at a single angle, the so-called spirit slips slowly out in front of those sitting at the table. Here. Like, like this. There. Then Laura says whatever she wants to. Changing her voice. When it's all over, she simply manipulates this cord on a pulley inside the cabinet. The image is returned to the cabinet. Hmm. Simple. Oh. Well, then she merely tricked us. Tricked you. I've known for years that Laura's nothing but a fraud. You might have oh. kept what you know to yourself, Harvey. Oh, Mrs. Winston. Laura, I ask... I asked her not to come here. She insisted that since you extended the invitation, she was obliged to. I felt it only fair to show her that she'd been the victim of a hoax. Oh, Harvey, never Please. mind, Miss Keaton. I'm not in the least embarrassed. The apparition was a trick, yes. But I assure you, my dear, the voice was not. Oh, of course it was, Laura. You know it. Indeed. Harvey, my dear, there are many things between earth and heaven that none of us know. There are many things that you don't know. Yes, I have used tricks at our meetings, I admit that. But not everything that has happened here has been trickery. You'll have to convince me, Laura. Harvey, I have a feeling... A feeling... That someday, somehow, I will convince you. And that when I do, you'll never be able to scoff at me again. I can't see that there's anything to settle. You haven't the right to hold me like this, Laura. You don't love me. Why don't you give me my freedom? Simple, Harvey. Because no woman likes to see another take her place. And besides, it's so convenient being married to your income. You're the most selfish, the most self-centered <laughs> woman I've ever met. Am I, darling? You certainly are. Laura... All I ask is a divorce. I'll see to it that you're well cared for financially. No, Harvey. You're wasting your breath. I told you no yesterday. I say no again today. And I'll keep on saying no as long as I live. As long as you live. Yes. Just so, my dear. Excellent, Frederica. I'm driving out to Cliff Point. Won't you ride along with me? We'll be back by noon. Oh, why, thank you so much. I, I would like the fresh air. Then I'll come along, Frederica. I need some company, and besides, I want to have a little talk with you. Frederica! Yeah, 
early this morning, after a ten days' coma. She seems to have recognized people, but something is wrong with Miss Skeeton's nerve centers. For one thing, she can't use her voice. An operation, perhaps? Yes, a very serious one. To require, well, quite an expense. Oh, hang the expense. Get the best surgeon you know of. I'll pay all the bills, everything. Only Frederica Keaton must recover. I say, Winstead, do you really think that... that this girl will ever recover? I don't know. It's been months since the accident. She hasn't been able to speak one word to me. Now, look here, it's, it's none of my affair, really, but... I know things have been going very badly for you lately. Losing your wife and all. But you need some money, old man. Oh, no, no. No, thanks. Thanks a lot, Rogers. My money's not completely gone. Yet. Good news. Good news, Winston. Yes, Doctor? The operation was a success. <laughs> Believe me, I, I never dreamed it would require three operations to make Miss Keaton able to speak again. She can talk? Yes. After almost six months of silence. Oh, that's splendid. When can I see your doctor? Why, uh, now, if you wish. Here, uh, this way. Just, just a few minutes now. She's, she's very weak. Yes. Hello, Frederica. Harvey. Harvey. Darling. Darling, at last. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful, dear? Oh, my dearest one, to hear your voice again. I, I thought I'd never speak to you again. You must forget all that, darling. Get well soon, please. Because just as soon as you're strong enough, we'll be married, dearest. Just as I've always told you we'd be. Dark fantasy. 
you have heard a delicate case of murder. The 14th original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop. Georgiana Cook was heard tonight as Laura Winstead. Ben Morris was Harvey Winstead. Eleanor Naylor Corrin played Frederica Keaton. Muir Hype was Rogers. And Fred Wayne was the doctor. Next Friday night at the same time, listen to the 15th unusual tale in this series of dark fantasy, Spawn of the Subhuman, in which the nation's favorite soprano star makes an aeroplane flight to an incredible destiny that awaits her at the hands of a strange and mysterious madman. Tom Paxton speaking. Dark fantasy comes to you from WKY, Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.